Here we have another example of a similar process. Use the definition of the derivative to find f prime of x. So we're going to find the derivative, but we're going to use the definition. All right? So if we know f prime of x is equal to... I don't want just a final result. That's not what I'm after. I'm after, do you know how to use the definition? So you need to demonstrate that you know how to use the definition. All right, so see what we have here. Uh, we need, oh, sorry. This is equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero. f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x, assuming that exists. If this limit doesn't exist, then we say the derivative doesn't exist, and that's the end of the problem. So, uh, evaluate. We know how to find f of something. That means this expression goes in for the value of x. When you subtract a function, you must subtract with parentheses. So, perhaps a good thing to do here is to pause the video. See how far down the line you can get. Hopefully, you can get all the way through to the final result. Your final result will be a function of some sort. It will be a function, and that function is the derivative. It will be a function of x. So pause the video see now and see if you can get all the rest of the way home. All right, let's see if I can somehow get to where you got your final result to be and see if I can do it correctly here. So this limit is equal to this limit. We need to evaluate the function. So this is the square root of x plus delta x plus 2. So this is this piece. Minus, when you subtract a function, subtract with parentheses when needed. So this is that piece. All over delta x. Now, let's distribute and simplify here a little bit. Look, direct substitution, by the way. Direct substitution, delta x goes to 0. This is the square root of x. Square root of x plus 2 minus, distribute negative square root of x, negative. This would give you 0 divided by 0. So we're going to need to do some algebra, simplify, and try again. So that's what's going to be in the, in the offing here. Limit is delta x goes to 0. Let's distribute this negative sign and see what we get out of this mess. minus square root of x, minus 2, all over delta x. The 2's cancel, so at least we have that. And out of this, we get this is equal to the limit as delta x. Let me make that a little bit better. Delta x goes to 0. We're left with the square root of x plus delta x, minus the square root of x, all over delta x. And again, direct substitution gives us 0 divided by 0. We need to do some more algebra. And we know how to do this because we, rec we recognize this as a limit variety we saw in Chapter 1. We have a conjugate. So we have the square root. We need the conjugate. So this is where we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator. I'm going to do this here to save a line. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of this expression. So this is the square root of x plus delta x plus radical x. And the denominator is the same. Square root of x plus delta x plus the square root of x. Remember, do not multiply these. Just leave this unmultiplied. When you multiply here, it is the square of the first. You square the first, and it's always subtract and then you square the last. Square the first minus square the last. Well, when you square the first, it simply removes the radical. When you square the last, it simply removes the radical. That's the procedure for multiplying by conjugate, and that's one of the reasons that back in chapter one, we plowed this ground. So this is already beginning to get cultivated in your mind. And so this is now equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero of when you square the first, that's x plus delta x. All it does is remove the radical minus square the last. All that does is remove the radical all over delta x. A times, I'm sorry, we have some more stuff in the denominator here. Delta x times 
this larger expression. All right. Now let's simplify all that mess. The x's cancel. We're left with delta x divide by, let's write this out, delta x in the numerator over delta x in denominator. We know what's going to happen here in just a bit. All right. Cancel delta x with delta x whenever, you, whenever everything from the numerator vacates. Remember, we always leave a 1. And so this is equal to the limit. If delta x goes to 0. There's plenty to do here, but every individual step is straightforward. So keep your wits about you. This is now 1 over the square root of x plus delta x plus, I read that should be a plus, plus square root of x. So we had 0 divided by 0, so you do a boatload of algebra, you simplify and try again. Now, direct substitution. As soon as I substitute in, now you can stop writing LIM. Direct substitution, this says this is the, the square root, I'm sorry, this is 1 over the square root of x plus 0 plus the square root of x. This is 1 over square root of x plus square root of x. Well, a plus a is 2a. Thing plus thing is 2 thing. This is 1 over 2 square root of x. That is the derivative of that function. Use the definition to find the derivative. Limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And then there is enough algebra to satisfy, I think, just about everybody. They always say you never really learn your algebra until you take your calculus. Well, here you go. I give you this. The devil is in the details. But these are details that you need to be able to handle. You need to be able to work through this, this, this computation. You need to be able to use the definition to find the derivative. And in this case, that's what that is. So this is the value of, we just found f prime of x is equal to that. That's the derivative of the function.